Brian Davis, Home Improvement Man. Today I'm going to teach you how to find a stud that could lead anywhere, all sorts of jokes. If, uh, if you like making dirty lumber jokes and, and all that, feel free to fill, put in your own right there. But <clears throat> whenever you are, let's say, hanging uh, something heavy on the wall, um, in my case, I'm putting in baseboard, and so I want to be able to put a nail into the stud. And so, how do you find one? In the US, most construction is what they call 16 on center, meaning the center of a stud is 16 inches away from the previous stud, from a corner, whatever. 16 on center. The other common uh, distance is 24. Now you can't assume it's either going to be 16 or 24, but in nearly every case it will be 16 inches or 24 inches, 16 inches being the more common. So knowing that it's 16 inches, or most likely going to be 16 inches, where to start looking? And the answer is the outlet or the wall switch. Nearly all the time, not every time, nearly all the time, the box, the electrical box that that is mounted to is nailed to a stud. So I know that the there should be a stud on either side of that outlet box. Now, the box uh, is not quite to the edge of the wall plate. The box sits a little bit on the inside. So what that means then is this edge of the wall plate should be on one side or the other, the stud. And then the way that I can find it is well, there's two options. Some people like to use the stud finder and never have very much luck with them. The other way you can do it is by tapping the wall. You'll notice there's a difference. There's a hollow echo where there is no stud. Now, sometimes you'll get the hollow echo even where there is a stud. And that, what that means then is that the nails or screws that hold the sheetrock to the stud are not tied up against the stud, so you're still getting a little bit of an echo. But, tell from tapping that the stud is on this side of the outlet box, the center lining up with the edge of the wall plate. Now, I already know that this wall, that this wall is 16 inches on center, so at that point what I could do is pull out a tape measure, either put marks on the wall or just lay the tape measure down on the floor so that one of the 16 inch increments lines up with that wall stud. Most tape measures that are designed for carpentry or construction will have occasionally numbers that are marked in red. Those red are 16, 32, 48, and onward all multiples of 16. And so if I lay this on the ground, I can quickly find where the 16 inches is. All I have to do then is to line up one of the red marked numbers, one of the multiples of 16, with this outer edge of the wall plate. Now it would be wise, it would be smart then, if I know that there's a stud here, is to go and look for the next one. Right there. You hear that difference? That one's a good, good sound. Hopefully, that wasn't just annoying, it was actually illustrating the point of the different sounds that you'll hear. Um, so I know that that one lined up with a 16 mark, here's my 32 mark, so I can extend my tape measure all the way down the wall, and I will have, I will know exactly where 16 inches on center is for every single stud. Now when you're nailing the baseboard, it's always a good idea to give it a gentle pull away from the wall. If it moves after you put the nail in, that usually means you didn't hit the stud. Now there is a base plate. Um, in this case, I have floor that's been put up on top of floor, so I can't always assume I can hit the base plate at the bottom all the way across. So I still need to aim for the 16 inch on center along this wall. You can use that same method for mounting anything to the wall, anything that requires you to hit the stud. Most smaller pictures, smaller mirrors, don't really need to hit a stud because they're not that heavy. 
TVs, large mirrors, heavy objects that are hanging from the wall, you always want to hit a stud. Uh, yeah, anything that might carry a lot of weight or that has weight pulling that could pull away from the wall or that someone could take a hold of and intentionally or accidentally pull something away from the wall, you want to make sure you're going into a stud. And if you're using the stud to pull away from the wall, make sure you're using or using a stud to make sure someone can't pull something away from the wall, make sure you're using a screw. A screw is good for pulling energy. A nail is good for the shearing energy. Uh, so, hope that helps. Hope you uh, help that, hope that makes it a little bit easier to mount things to your wall and for you to continue on with your projects.